Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Almeida. I am a law librarian at UMass Law. And today we have our second research workshop. Um, and we're going to be talking about doing a literature review, or sometimes it's called a preemption check, or really just what we're doing is we're searching for articles nice and easy. Um, so our agenda for this quick 30 minute session is to look at a topic pick out some keywords, and then I'm going to show you how I would search using three different databases. And I'm just searching for law review articles. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Westlaw, Lexis, and Hein Online. There's obviously a number of other places that you can get articles from, like Google Scholar. You could use Primo, which is our library catalog, which will give you interdisciplinary um, articles. So there's plenty of other places to go, but just for today, we're going to focus on those major three. I'm going to continue to do other workshops, and so I'll make sure to cover um, things like interdisciplinary databases at another time. But you can always reach out um, if you have any questions. Lawlib at umassd.edu is the best way to get in touch with the librarian. All right, so before we start, I'm going to just show you some of our resources. The first one is our scholarly research twin page. So you go here. I'm in Westlaw. We're going to go to twin. I have put the link for the scholarly research for law students. Um, I have put that in the chat. And if you uh, ever need I'm just going to put it in student mode. Here we go. If you ever need this link, just reach out lawlib at umassd.edu. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We've created this, put lots of resources in it to help you with your research. Today, we're going to be talking about researching. So we have a tab on researching. I have a few just small readings in there from books that we have here in the library that cover this topic, how to research for um, an academic paper. And so you can go ahead and if you just click in, it's a scanned copy of that reading. Makes it nice and easy. We also have a scholarly legal research library guide, which I've also put in the chat which has choosing a topic, a tab on finding books. Today, we're gonna to be finding articles. So as you can see, I have like three steps, legal and interdisciplinary databases, free online databases. And then of course, if you can't find full access to anything really, you should contact us and we'll get it through interlibrary loan. The last thing is that I did uh, conducting a literature review. I did two videos on this uh, during the pandemic. And so I've put them here. And so you're welcome to go and watch those as well. And I cover the same thing. Um, I cover Westlaw Lexis, and then I do Legal Track, um, Hein Online, and Google Scholar in the second part. The other kind of resource that I wanna show you that we'll be using today is called our scholarly research checklist. You can find it under choosing a topic. <clears throat> this is a checklist that I developed based on, you know, meeting with students about their topics. And the reason why I did it was because it, I just wanted to have a place or a checklist that you could go through and determine what sources you needed for your paper. Now, not everyone is gonna need all these different sources, but it's good to think about all these different categories as you're researching. And we'll use this today as we go through a topic and then we go ahead and conduct our literature review. All right. So why don't we find a topic and do some research. So today, on Westlaw today, I found this article, textbook publishers sue, sue shadow library, library genesis over pirated books, which I think is, you know, just right up my alley. So I thought that I would do some research and see what kind of articles there are already out there. 
about shadow libraries, about fair use, um, about publishers, about copyright infringement. Okay. So the first place that I am going to go is I'm gonna start in Westlaw. So go, we'll go to Westlaw Precision. I'm gonna to go to secondary sources. And I'm gonna click on law reviews and journals. Now it's time to come up with a keyword search. So before I do that, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the share on my screen and I'm gonna show you the scholarly checklist really quick. Here we go. I'm just gonna share that. Here we go. Okay. So today my topic has to do with copyright, and shadow libraries. And if you're not sure what a shadow library is, it's an online database of uh, readings, academic readings for students. And of course, publishers don't like them because they take from their books and they feel like it's copyright infringement. So my keywords are going to be shadow libraries, fair use, and publishers. Now I could keep going, right? I could put copyright in there. I could put a number of different things. I'm gonna start with this just to get started. Another thing I put here is synonyms. And so I don't think we need one just yet. Uh, I don't, maybe as, the as we start to research, we might find other keywords that are synonyms that they're using, but let's just start with this. Um, the example that I use most often is that sometimes if students are doing a paper on children and the law, uh, sometimes I just remind them, don't forget, you might need to use the word juvenile, or you might need to use the word minor, because those are uh, synonyms of children that might come up more in the literature than just the word children. I also have a place for you to put your thesis. So your this can get developed over time. So I usually tell students, you know what, you come in with a topic, but what you wanna do is you wanna make the topic your own. You wanna have your own voice. You wanna have a, a, you know, just an original spin on your topic. So what you do is you do a literature review, you read the current literature, and then you come up with your thesis. It's sometimes easier when you're already reading what's out there to kind of figure out where your voice belongs in the conversation. Then I have a spot for cases, statutes, and regulations. So for instance, I would definitely put the, the case that was mentioned in the Westlaw Today piece. I put it in here. And then the newspapers and blogs, I put the Westlaw Today article. I'd make sure that I put that my source citation here. I'd make some notes. Maybe if I'm going to quote something, I put it in quotation marks. That way, when I'm writing my paper, I remember to cite and always cite. Make sure that, you know, we don't want you to ever um, be concerned about plagiarism. So make sure that you cite as much as you can. And then we'll do our literature review, which is what we're going to do now. So we'll start to look for articles. And when we find good articles, we'll put the citation, maybe some notes. So this is just a way to keep yourself organized, keep a great list of sources. That way, when you go to create your outline, you can easily put the sources in. Oh, this is when I'm gonna talk about this article. This is when I'm gonna talk about this case, right? And then when you go to write your article, you already have the footnotes or at least information that all the information you need to create the footnote. And that makes it easier. You know where you got that information from. It's just an, uh, another way of being organized. Once again, this is something I created. You do not have to use this. It is completely up to you. Everyone has their own system. I just would suggest that you do your best to be as organized as possible. It makes the writing process a lot easier. 
So I'm going to stop the share on this. And then we're going to go back to Tesla. All right. So now that I have some keywords, I'm going to put together a keyword search. Okay. So I think that I'm just going to try this idea of shadow libraries and see if there's any literature out there specific about shadow libraries. And then I'm gonna hit my search button. So now I'm just telling Westlaw, I want shadow libraries together and I want them just from law reviews and journals. That's it, very narrow search. And so here you see right to research and copyright law from photocopying to shadow libraries. That sounds like it's right on my topic. So I would read this, include it in my source list. The next step would be if this was if this article is gold, if this is like, yes, this article is great, but I'm going to put my own spin or my own voice on this topic, but this is definitely a source I want to use in my paper. I'm looking through the footnotes. I'm finding more sources. Right to research and copyright. Oh, that's the same one. Excuse me. So Internet Archive, which is also considered a shadow library. Is there an emergency fair use superpower? So that's interesting. Hmm. And then it looks like these are just textbooks for education. So that might be interesting. So now you're going through these and you're saying, should I add it to my source list? You know, sometimes it's just a quick skim to see if this is something that you should go back and revisit and really dig into as part of your research for your paper. All right, we're gonna do the same or a similar search in Lexis. Now, hopefully you all know at this point that you can just go to the library website, go down to quick links, and this is where all the good stuff is, right? So next would be Lexis. And I've already signed in. So I'm going to go to Lexis Plus, and it's very similar to Westlaw. So we're going to go to content, we're going to go to secondary materials, and we're going to click on law review and journals. Uh, this time I'm going to do a little bit different. So I'm going to look at, how about we look at libraries, or how about internet? Um, Internet, in the same sentence as library or libraries, right? And the same sentence as fair use. So fair use I wanna to put together. And let's see, now this is a little bit bigger. I'm kind of opening it up and I'm just gonna click on uh, the search button and I got 84 results. So electrifying copyright norms and making cyberspace more like a book. Interesting. Now 84 is a lot to go through and you probably don't have the time to do that. So what you wanna do is narrow your search. So on the left-hand side, you might wanna do it by jurisdiction. Looks like California has a lot to say on this topic. So maybe you just wanna talk about California even though copyright is a federal issue. Maybe you wanna look at the timeline. You're like, I don't really, maybe I just want it from the past, let's say the past few years. And I can go ahead and narrow by that. We can narrow by sources. So this is gonna give you all the law reviews. So maybe you're looking for a specific law review. Maybe it'll have specific practice area. Maybe I just wanna look at all the ones on copyright law. So now I'm at 14 results. So I've taken the 84, I've 
kind of narrowed my search down. I have now I have only 14 to look through. I believe we saw this one. Something similar. Yeah. This one we saw in Westlaw. So there is some some overlap, but not always. So this is talking a lot about, you know, during the pandemic, um, how publishers allowed, you know, libraries to use more things digitally because libraries were closed and that sort of thing. All right. So the last place that I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you Hein Online. Uh, once again, we're on the library website. Under Quick Links, we're going to go to Hein Online. Hein Online is enormous. It's, it's very big. A lot of uh, overlap Westlaw, Lexis, and Hein, but there's also a lot of other materials in Hein. If you're ever doing legislative history, Hein is great. I like to do the search in all three places. And the reason why is because I like to make sure that I've covered all my bases. It's kind of like when you're doing um, when you're doing legal research and you're doing case law research, you keep going until you find the same cases over and over again. I take the same approach when I'm doing uh, a literature review. In Hein, I like to use the advanced search option. And what I'll do is in my section title, I'll put the most important um, keywords. And then in the full text, I'll put my secondary keywords, okay? So for instance, if I put shadow libraries, and then in full text, I put copyright publishers, and now I'm gonna search. So I have two. So that was a very narrow search. Now, if you're only getting two, you might go, oh, this doesn't seem right. You might need to use shadow libraries, copyright and publishers all in your full text search box and see what kind of search you get there because maybe two is not enough and you wanna make sure you don't miss anything. So this one is from the spring 2022 right and research and copyright laws, which I believe we've seen before. Okay, that's an international one. I am going to, so say you really like this particular article, okay? You think it's great. The first thing I wanna show you actually is if you do love it, there's a site key right here and it will cite it for you in Blue Book. What? So easy, right? Isn't that nice? But say you really, really love this article, okay? You're like, it's really on point, like what it has to say. I would love to see more like this, okay? Now, I don't know if this is going to work because it's such a new article, but we're going to give it a try. Let me see if I can grab the title. And I'm going to go into Google Scholar. A lot of high online stuff is in Google Scholar. So if you find good stuff in Google Scholar and it says available in high online, grab that title, go back to the library website, go into high online and put it in your search bar. So let's hope. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So it was cited by one. So what I'm doing right now is I'm putting it into uh, Google Scholar because I'm interested to see if anyone has cited this article. This works really well with older articles. If you find a really great article, you're like, oh, this is so great. I'd love more like this. You can throw it in Google Scholar. It will tell you which articles have cited your original article. So this one is about information seeking, sharing behavior, and copyright about violations among students in India in the digital age. So maybe you want to do a comparative law paper on copyright. This would be up, up your alley. Or maybe you just take a quick look at it to see if it has any um, 
any value for the paper that you are writing. So that's pretty much how you go about doing a literature review. You just need to really think about your keywords. Sometimes as you're researching, you'll find that you'll come across additional keywords and then you can use those to do your research. Um, like I said, I like to do, uh, I like to search in Westlaw, Lexis, and Hein because I think it just makes me feel like I'm doing a very thorough job. If I find an article that I really like, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to dig into those footnotes to find additional sources, and I'm going to put it in Google Scholar and figure out if anybody has cited that article, because that's going to give me similar articles, All right? If you have any additional questions, you are more than welcome to contact me. My email address is my email address is jessica.almeda at umasti.edu. You can get uh, reference help by emailing lawlib at umasti.edu. Uh, please check out our other workshops uh, during the fall. We'll be talking about interdisciplinary interdisciplinary databases, footnoting, finding books, etc. Thank you.